So running. So I mean, let's before before running, mm-hmm. you know, before running, like, what was your life like? Look, we go back a couple of years, right? More than a couple of years. <laughs> so uh, I mean, life was always, um, you know, just looking at growing up. You're growing up in a little bit of. You know, difficult situations and, and those type of things. You know, it's not born with a silver spoon, basically. And you've got to, you know, make your way through life. And uh, so there's a, there's a drive. There's, there's something that, that, that's inside of you that wants to keep going. Uh, you know, whether it be success, whether it be making a difference, whether it be, you know, study, you know, performing at work and all of those type of things. Um, so you've got that hard drives on, on one side. And then on the other side, you know, you kind of have this idea of, um, hey, look, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna work hard, then I need to play hard, <laughs> you know. So uh, that was kind of life, uh, you know, growing up, and um, but it was fun, it was good, never a dull moment. Yeah. Lots of people around, uh, you were one of them, <laughs> but uh, all good stuff, man, you know. Yeah, and I mean, I think uh, both of us. Um, at that stage, uh, there was no, uh, there was, there was, there was talk of play and then there was talk of work, but nothing in between. Yeah. You know, so when did that change for you? The in between? Yeah. Uh, when did the, when did the, when did your play change to running, not living for the weekend? Yeah. Uh, when that kind of come around? Sure. You know. I was sharing with you this morning as well. I remember this very clearly. One day at work, um, just decided, "Ah, let me use the stairs. One flight of stairs and you're standing there and you're going, hey, wait a minute, let me rather walk over it, you know, catch the lift, you know, and uh, it kind of starts to play on your mind. Like, what, what? You know, why is this happening to me? You know, I'm supposed to be young, fit, full of energy. That's, That's the idea at least. Um, but I think for me also, there's, there was a setback in life. I was in that car accident, well, two in a very short space of time. And uh, like I was sharing, you know, you, you kind of listen to, and I'm not talking about a GP, you know, a, a neurosurgeon sitting there telling you, listen, you're never basically going to get back to where you were before in terms of mobility and strength and those type of things. And you're going to need this type of operation and, you know, uh, your back. And, you know, there are all these little stories. And uh, even though you don't get into a state of depression, you get to a point of kind of marinating that, what the, the neurosurgeon is telling you, and it yeah. kind of becomes a part of your life. And um, so, look, for me, it was a case of a couple of things. Mobility was a problem. You kind of have this thing in the back of your mind thinking, shucks, man, if I need to get back to normal, sort of some normal life, uh, in terms of being able to move around, I'm going to need this operation. Um, at the same time, you you kind of default to some bad habits. So, couch potato, uh, kind of just eating whatever, whenever. And uh, things start to spiral, but not at a pace that is very, very noticeable, right? <laughs> it's like the slow spiral. <laughs> That's what kind of happens, you know? Uh, so you don't pick up on it, you know, uh, maybe one day your size 32, you know, <laughs> struggles to close a little bit, uh, but it's still bearable, you know, it's, you're not quite a 34, you know, <laughs> if you suck it in, the belt still closes. Um, but, you know, over time, you start to feel, you know, there's some sort of, you know, something's happening in my life, which, which shouldn't be happening, you know. Um, just being able to move around, just being able to enjoy life, and um, so yeah, that's that's that was the big wake up call for me. You know, a case of all right, I, I need to move in a nutshell. That's it. You know, whatever movement meant, I just needed to move. Um, and somehow or other, um, I started taking up or, or started, you know, saying, well only thing I can think of right now is, I, you know, should I get a bicycle? Should I do this? Should I do that? And I was like, wait, hold on. Let's just try walking, you know, uh, which was difficult for me, right? Because L2, my lower back, was the, 
the problem area. And uh, so what would happen is my back would literally lock up and I wouldn't be able to, to move, walk, you know, without pain. So for me, it was a case of let's just try a little bit of walking and uh, let's push the boundaries ever so slightly. Let's see, you know. And I kid you not, Rich, um, this, this might sound like silly for a lot of people, but I would really look at, you know, like your, these light poles. Right, then I'd say like, okay, can I walk one and, and then maybe can I run to another one, you know, or can I walk two and then run one, you know, that kind of thing. And that's where the journey started, right? Like from ground zero, you know, uh, just trying to measure light bulbs and, and, and see if I can actually walk it or run it um, and try to manage the pain and minimize the pain, etc. And then from there, I, I had this wonderful love that started and it wasn't necessarily a, lo a love for for running it was a love for movement you know and I think a lot of people take that for granted that maybe they, they can move around freely my challenge to them is how much are you willing to to expand that you know uh, for me it was a, a hard knock not being able to to move and then you know without pain and then kind of just pushing that boundary so I think for me the love was movement and then you start to get into this nature of right let's let's push the boundary let's 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 see how far we can push this and uh, from there it's just taken off <laughs> to a level where it, where it is today yeah which is phenomenal so what year did you have those accidents so i had that in my early teens right so two of them back to back within a three month uh, period and over the course of years it kind of degraded the, the condition it never got better but with me I started ignoring it and it was like ah oh, you know what like my mother used to say just walk it off you know <laughs> if you've got pain just walk it off <laughs> so you know that was kind of my my mantra at that point in time you know ah oh, it's gonna get better uh, you know, uh, it, it, it will get there someday. You know, that, that kind of mindset, that kind of thinking. Uh, but just slowly but surely over the years, it's just started getting worse and worse, yeah. Mm. And, I, and I wasn't doing anything about it, right? Uh, no strengthening exercises, no nothing. You know, until I got to the last resort of then going to uh, a neurosurgeon, yeah. Sure. I mean, it must have been... It must have been so painful that you... you I don't know if you skipped everyone else or, uh, or your GP just was like, I don't know what to do. Or... So that's where the journey started. I went to the GP. GP did a couple of things, said, well, you know, go for this test, go for that test, uh, came back. And then it was a case of, actually, I think you need to go and see a specialist. Um, and that's what I did, yeah. So uh, went to the neurosurgeon, stuck me in all these freaking fancy machines, uh, did the, the MRI, uh, had to lay the, you know, 35 minutes, don't move, otherwise we have to start this MRI over. And, uh, you know, at that point in time, they could see, okay, ah, there we go, L2 is your problem, so lumbar 2, um, you know, and, and that's, your, that's your issue, and that's what, you know, that's what we need to fix. And uh, what they proposed was, the only way we can fix this is with an operation. Otherwise, you can be buggered for the rest of your life. <laughs> you know? So it was a knock. It was a hit. Yeah. Why was the operation not an option for you? Or was it an option? What happened that you... Did you have the op? No, I decided not to go for the op. Um, I heard a couple of stories, right? And I started uh, investigating this thing. What's interesting, though, is that if you go to a financial planner and you, and you sit down with him or her, or whatever the case may be, you, you kind of go, okay, cool, let me go to another financial planner. Let me get a second opinion on this. Let me, you know. Well, typical human nature, we go to a doctor and we, we kind of don't go for that second opinion, you know. Uh, we just kind of like, okay, this doctor is saying this, so let me hold on to whatever the doc is saying, and this is now biblical after this. And I decided, well, look, I, I'm not that comfortable with someone, you know, going and operating on my spine. Yeah, I mean, 
you know, I started reading up about a couple of things and I thought, you know what, I've lived a couple of years with this pain. Let me do a little bit of investigation and if needs be, I'll then go for a second opinion. So uh, I just decided, look, at the end of the day, let's try doing a little bit of strength exercises. Let's look at really losing weight, <laughs> which was tough. Let's do some, you know, strengthening the core. Uh, really just started to understand and read up about, uh, you know, just, you know, what aids movement, you know, whether it be uh, things like uh, your quads, your hamstrings, the glutes, the hip flexors, how to strengthen the hip flexors, um, especially around the core, how to, you know, strengthen the core. And um, so it took a hell of a lot of self-study. So I don't, what, please don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. And I'm not saying don't trust your doctor. I'm not saying that. <laughs> By all means, please go and uh, take that counsel from, from, from someone who is a specialist and spent many years, you know. But there's the other side of it as well, you know, where you kind of have to learn just to, you know, listen to your body um, and, you know, try at the end of the day. Don't just give up. Um, you know, we see these memes like um, there's like two windows where people will line up for pulls, uh, you know, because they're not feeling well. And there's the other window that says, uh, you know, go on a healthy diet, you know, try this, try that. And everyone's lining up, you know, just give me some more pulls, more pulls. Um, so that's, that's some of the encouragement that I'd like to pass on to people, you know. Uh, don't be afraid to try. Listen to the body. And then just go back to fundamental things, you know, things like uh, eating uh, a little bit cleaner. Um, please, I don't eat 100% clean. If, 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 if anyone gets to know me, they will know that uh, sugar is my best friend. So <laughs> um, and, and strength exercise, you know. And then, of course, there's this thing called longevity in life. So I think that, that there's this movement thing that I wanted to do, and then there's longevity. So you, you, a lot of people will feel like they're doing okay for the right year and the right now, but they're not thinking that 20 years down the line, you know. Uh, what's, what's gonna happen to me 20 years down the line? I mean, you've got young kids, you still wanna be able to, uh, you know, run around, uh, kick a ball, you know, do things that they want to do, you know, uh, like hiking or, or, or just be active with them. Yeah. Not only now, but I mean, you know, in years to come as well. Um, I mean, so that's, that's like so important, you know. Yeah, it's, uh, um, you know, the, 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 the phenomenon of the, the quick diets, lose 20 kgs in three weeks and... Um, I've never subscribed to that. I mean, I'm not saying that they are. That. Maybe they are. I don't know. But it's this like almost immediate gratification. Yes. Everyone's focused yeah. on yeah. like if it's oh, if it's anything more than a a 30 second reel, they don't want to watch it. You yeah, know? it's got to get to the point like right now. But you don't, you don't, um, you don't learn anything from 30 seconds. It's short term memory. It's gone. Or oh. you know, you don't develop um, a muscle memory. You don't develop a skill. You know, we, we've been speaking about quite a few things mm. over this, uh, the morning we've been together. And, um, you know, the, uh, I just want to, I want to ask you, so how much did you weigh when you walked up that stairs? So body weight. All right. Are you ready? So 120 kilograms. How many kilograms did I lose? 54. Right? In a very short space of time. Right. I did it. No. So you like lost a person. Uh -uh. I lost a person. Yeah. Lost a person. So I wasn't born like that. Right? <laughs> you, it's a slow spiral. <laughs> That's what I was talking about. Right? Uh, <clears throat> believe it or not, with my, my running now, I actually had to put on some more weight. Uh, just to be able to feel like I can run the distance. Mm. So, I mean, my distances that I'm running is not, I mean, it's, it's ultra distances. So, uh, I've actually put on a lot of weight now. So, 
10 kgs uh, but that's obviously a combination of uh, muscle um, and of course just making sure that i'm bolt up enough to be able to to go the distance um yeah so but it's it, uh, yeah it's a lot so it's uh it, so, so, so like I said, and did you lose that in 30 days then? no um so i think the first 34 was like in eight months or something yes yeah and then the after i had to slow it down my, i just couldn't my, my, i was just shedding weight like crazy uh i just had to slow it down and just like start eating a little bit more um so even till today i mean i still eat a lot of nuts and stuff like that like um just to be able to is that like the people at work you eat the nuts <laughs> i just eat a lot of high color foods yeah um i mean just just the level of training that we do is just insane mm. so i mean you, you you just i mean training for comrades now um you know earlier this year it's quite interesting i mean i got a couple of messages from a couple of mates of mine saying but we've seen you on this photo and that photo oh you're looking a bit thin there buddy or hey you're losing too much weight you know that kind of thing and um i mean you're running like what 115 uh kilometers a week you know um it's a, it's a bang lot so you're not so you're not doing that from january to to june but i mean you you kind of build up build up build up and you know on average you know, I like to keep it around the 80, 85 kilometers a week. Um, but during comrades training, you get to that point where you, you know, 115 uh, uh, on a weekly basis. It's, it's, you, it's nuts. Yeah, from in this journey that I have took now to run, to train for the Neisner Forest Marathon, yeah. um, I mean, I did it in 10 weeks and I have no experience, no coach, no team. Yeah, I just amazing. knew I just knew I needed to run more. Yeah. And it literally hit me as I was just I I do a lot of video diaries yeah. myself. Yeah. Not I don't publish many of it, but this one was I was like eating breakfast and I was talking yeah. about, okay, you know, let's do a summary of what I've run and I looked at the app and I yeah. calculating and I was yeah. like, holy crap. Like I just ran two hundred and seven kilometers in the f in the five weeks and that was only counting the weekend big runs because right I, I, i'm just it's just my life that uh i know yeah. my my day starts at 6 a.m yeah kids and yeah. stuff so if i want to run uh i need to get up earlier than that right. and then also right. i work and i yeah. run on business so i can only do small runs in the week right. that's that will take me max an hour if I do 5 a.m. and I can go for a run yeah. and be ready, yeah. get the kids up at 6. So when I looked at that and I realized, like, gee, it was 207 kilometers in that five-week period. That was, that was big for me. And it was the, yeah. it actually switched on the, right. whoa, I can do this. Yeah. You know, that's actually a lot. Like, it's literally captured in this one video. Yeah. But now you're telling me that your average run a week <laughs> is 100 in? So during, for comrades, one one five. One one five. Wow. That's yeah. A lot. I mean, I'm not doing when I mean, I'm not training for this. Those big, th big races. Then I'm averaging about eighty five a week. Uh, it's still that's that's impressive. And I mean, <laughs> yeah, but what <laughs> we, ran, we ran together this morning. You're not slow. I mean, we we'll, uh, look at some <laughs> of your stats. <laughs> Holy moly, you are. For me, what I look at is an elite athlete. And I mean, you you couldn't climb a flight of stairs. Correct. In, in, in what year was that? So I think that was around 2018. It's 2018. Yes. And now you elite athlete. And you were saying to me that people don't know to plant seeds. Yes. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so that staircase was your... Was that your seed planting? Yeah. And you, you couldn't walk exercise because of your spine? I couldn't move. And you didn't go for an up? No. And now you're running elite athlete times? Yeah. <laughs> so, does it, does it, has it registered 
do you, you know, I'm, I'm sure that, that moment must have happened in your life and you realize this. And, and sometimes we're so busy running ahead that we don't step back and look at it. And I'm like, I'm looking at this and I'm going, Gavin, you're an elite athlete. So for me, Richard, it's, it's the journey, right? I always talk about the journey. And <clears throat> look, I have come to a certain point in my journey, but I still got a lot left in this journey, you know? And... I've got so much to learn, especially in the you know around running and 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 the nutrition and the science and all of those things. But to your point, no, I I haven't reached the point of saying, oh, I've, I'm at that level or anything. I, I don't see myself like that at all. Um, and yes, we are clocking like crazy times. Uh, you know, I. You know, running 5Ks, you know, 20 minutes, uh, 10K is still the 43-minute, 42-minute mark. I said to you, this year I'm aiming to do Cape Town Marathon sub-3 hours 40. You know, um, my big goal for next year, God willing, is uh, the Two Oceans Ultra. Um, I knocked off 32 minutes of my previous time this year. I'm, I'm hoping to go sub five for the 56 kilometer next year. So it's like this constant um, push of yourself, but within limits, you know, you still got a day job, you still got, uh, you know, other responsibilities. But just listening to what you were saying earlier on about getting up and all I'm hearing is no excuses. As you're talking to me, I'm hearing, you're not saying it, but I'm, I'm hearing no excuses. So even like if you just come back to my weight journey in 2018, I was like, no, 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 look, I, my weight is out of control. It's, it's not helping my mobility. It's, you know, I never did no exercise during that weight loss journey in that two years. I only started running in October 2020, right? So there was, there was no lifting of weights, going to gym. I mean, I couldn't hardly even move. There was no running. There was no walking. There was nothing. There was no crazy diet. None of those things. All it meant was just to say no to certain things. And certain people find it very hard to do that, you know. Um, junk food. It's called junk food for a reason, right? <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> Somebody said to me... Um that the reason why just eating healthy is so hard for people yeah. is because normal food has become this elite healthy food, yes. but it's just the normal food. Yeah. <laughs> but we, st we, we, we go for this again, immediate gratification of yeah. fast food yeah. and all those sure. kind of things. Sure. Instead of just taking time to prepare a meal, Absolutely. Or do some meal planning, yeah. you know. Yeah. Say, hey, on a Monday, I'm gonna have uh, instead of deep fried chicken. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the um, like a, a chicken steaks. Sure. Instead, you know, I'm yeah. gonna oven bake it. So there's a time and place for everything, right? You can still have your your deep fried chicken. Exactly. It's not, and it's just people just don't want to do that often enough, yeah. and then they introduce into the diet. I've heard this thing, you know, it's like this is the most ridiculous thing: a cheat day. I'm like, you cheated your whole life. <laughs> can you, can you, can you like yeah. stop it? Yeah. I also, I also don't believe in cheat days. I build it into my, my eating. Uh, just that food story. The junk food is cheaper than healthy veggies and fruits and stuff like that. It's just like you buy fruit salad. It's so expensive. McDonald's, is, you know, you kind of just, I'm not knocking them, but I mean, you kind of just go the easier route. And the other thing I learned if ever you see on a box something that says healthy, don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> box. If it's even a cardboard box and it says healthy, just uh, yeah, okay. you you don't see healthy printed on a on an apple or on a carrot. <laughs> you don't see hey healthy carrots, you know. Uh, so, <laughs> so so it's those kind of things that that I stayed away from. I mean, it's 2024 now. I haven't had McDonald's and, and all of those 
since 2018. I just like walked away from it, right? So it's those things. Uh, enjoy other things, you know? Um, and there's plenty of it to enjoy. Like some people will do crazy things, like they'll cut out carbohydrates, for example. Why? Oh, because I want to lose weight. Why? Because carbs make you fat. No, carbs don't make you fat. It's the amount of food that you eat. <laughs> It makes you fat. Well, it's only eating carbs. Yeah. And never breaking away and like eating yeah. something else or, you know, having other things on your plate. Yeah. No, sure. Sure. Just... Yeah. Anything healthy printed on a box, stay away from it. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, people ask me, why do I run? Right? I mean, there's many reasons why I run. So, um, I like carbs. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love uh, anything. It's a sweet treat, you know. It's not like I'm eating it whole day, every day, but I mean, I do build it into my, uh, into my diet. Um, why else do I love running? I mean, there's a sense of freedom. Um, and if I sit back and I think about it, there's two things, right? So there's what have I learned about running? And then the other thing is what has running taught me? So I think there's, there's, there's a bit of contrast there. So, and this is leading up to why, also my, my passion and love for running. What have I learned about running? Running is not just about putting on that pair of shoes and heading out the door. It's, it's far from that, you know. That's how it starts out. Um, but I mean, you know, there's a lot of science behind it. Uh, there's the nutrition factor. Uh, you know, when to eat, what to eat, hydration. Uh, what to use for hydration um, there's this and that I find extremely intriguing okay uh, especially if you're doing ultra um, running I mean anything beyond 42.2 uh, kilometers is like kind of uh, classified as ultra so you're running your 56 kilometer one or uh, comrades marathon like we've just done now how do you plan for that? I mean, how do you how do you run for that extended period of time? So you you kind of get intrigued by that, or at least I did. Well, I, and I'm still very intrigued, and I still got so much to learn about that. Um, but I think the other side of it is, what is running taught me? You know, and that for me is really quite fascinating. So for me, it's taught me to be very resilient. You know, just to never give up. Keep, you know, one of the guys I was chatting with was saying, so tell me, Gavin, if, you, if you're running comrades, or when you're running comrades on the 9th of June, and your body starts giving in and giving up on you, are you going to stop? Without even blinking, I just said, no. They said, yeah, but, if you, but your body's giving up. I said, no, I won't stop. But I'm, I'm, it's already locked in. I'm, I'm going to finish. So that's another thing that running has taught me, you know, kind of like to overcome. And uh, other things that running has taught me is just about, you know, discipline. You can train as hard as you want to, but if you don't have that discipline to get up and go and do what's on the program for that particular day, um, you know, you, you're kind of going to fall behind. So like I was sharing with you earlier on, I got a, a very strict, uh, you know, week. Uh, well, the whole calendar is planned out basically. I get one rest day and, you know, you kind of just, you know, follow the regime. So it, it's, yeah. And, and the other thing that running has taught me is just to, you know, really the fun aspect. And uh, what has also taught me is about community. And for me, that's flipping amazing. I mean, just the amount of people that you get to meet. Um, and they come from all walks of life, you know. And they just bring something into your life. It's just phenomenal. The, the community aspect is on another level. Anyone that you speak to that's part of a running community will tell you exactly the same thing. You know, it's a, it's a jewel. It's, it's, it's fun. You can sometimes, uh, you know, if you just want to have a, uh, like a hard conversation with someone, just say, hey, listen, I'm going through this. You know, those people that, that, that running has brought into your life, they, they, they're there for that. Sometimes you just feel like having a big laugh. Uh, most of the time, in all honesty, it's just a jaw. <laughs> you know, uh, good fun. And it, you kind of 
feed off other people. So, for example, you know, when we were doing the comrades training, you're getting up, or at least I'm getting up at 4 a.m., um, you know, getting ready to run with the guys. And you're doing this weekend after weekend after weekend, Saturday and Sunday, right? And then when you rock up, I, I promise you, all those guys are there on time, you know, ready to rock and roll. And, and, and they're all armed with war stories, <laughs> you know, uh, life stories, uh, you know, anything and everything gets discussed. And uh, I just, it's absolutely addictive, to be honest with you, you know, just having those people around. Yeah, yeah I mean, this morning, uh, we faced some very harsh weather. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. it would have been easy to roll over and go like, ah, I still send a message saying, like, oh, maybe I've got a cough. And we could have made excuses. Either one of us could have made excuses. Exactly. But we both showed up. Yeah. It was raining. Yeah. Yeah. And we went into it anyway. Yeah. You know, the rain eased up a bit, but then it came back and, and we had a wonderful time. And I, I did it. There's magical moments there, you know, stuff you'll never forget, like that sunrise. I mean, you got the mountain, you got the, the view of the bay, you know, running over Boys Drive. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, one thing I liked about it this morning, I must admit, uh, we went over, got to the bottom, and then I thought, ah, oh, you know, let's just hit the main road. And then you said something to me. You said, uh, oh, are we going to turn around here and go back up? And I was thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll am I'm, be very happy about that, you know. <laughs> but are you okay with it? And, and you were like, yeah, no, I, I want this challenge, you know. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool. That those words kind of stuck in my mind, you know. Because that's what it is, right? So... <clears throat> No matter, like I was sharing with you earlier, no matter what life throws at you, whether it be big or small, or sometimes your big might not be perceived as big you know, in my world, or your small might not be perceived as small in my world, or whatever the case may be, uh, when it comes to your, your challenges or, or hurdles that you're facing, whatever the case may be. Um, you're on your own journey, I'm on my own journey. But this is what I want to say. No matter what you are facing, your response to the problem or your response to the hurdle has got to be bigger than the problem itself. And that's kind of like what I, I kind of live by. This People who know me for many years would, would know this, say, this statement that I'm about to make now. I always spoke about, hey, you've got to attack the day, you know. Uh, and really, just attack it. No, no, I mean, like, full on. You know, you, 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 you're going in with everything or you kind of just don't do it at all you know don't just tinker around with it so your response to whatever you're facing in life has to be bigger than the problem itself and um when that when, when you have that or at least when i have that kind of mindset uh am i nervous yes does it make me scared yes <laughs> uh you know and you kind of go through these 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 kind of you know things that you play in your mind like you know is it going to be successful is it going to work is it uh but you just got to do it you got to you know put in your big boy shorts and jump all in and, and go for it you know um so your response just needs to be bigger and and, and um when i look at it from a running perspective as well uh that's another thing that running has taught me you know uh just how do i respond to running a massive race like uh, whether it be two oceans whether it be um, you know comrades um, you, you just got to go in there with this belief that look this is tough this is scary uh, but I'm going to do it you know yeah it's not in the it's not in knowing that you physically can do it um mm. It's in the, in actually in the, the challenge of let me see what I'm capable of. Yeah. I, I found that in my short journey now. Yeah. Um, it's just let me see what I'm capable of. And I'm seeing that a lot with other people as well. It's from, again, and you just shared it this, this morning when you shared it now, like walking from one light pole to another light pole. Exactly. Which is like, what, 10, 15 yeah. meters? It's a big deal for me, right? <laughs> and it's so easy for people to look at you today and say, oh, but you're an elite athlete. You run 
at four minutes, four and a half minutes a kilometer. Like, I can't do that. Yeah. It's easy for people to look at that and, 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 and say, yeah, no, you know, there's, there's, there's some reason why you can, or, oh, you can, you can do this running because you don't have kids. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. People are fine. People always find a reason, find something to disqualify themselves. You know? Yes. And then they never get up. They never go walk from one light pole. Yeah. To the next. They never start. Yeah. You know? And there's, um, you're just going, listening to everything that you were saying here. And I, I think about, like, there's a couple of people that I would like to say. I mean, I've called myself this many times. Yeah. And I want to pull them aside, like, lovingly, like, with no ill intent. But we, society's a bit messed up. Indeed. But we can't, we can't pull someone aside. Yeah. And say, hey, Gavin. Um, I mean, I love you. Yeah. But your, your weight's out of control, man. Yeah. Exactly. Like that will cause <laughs> what World War 17. No, that will cause. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You can't do that anymore. Yeah. Even if you got the greatest of intentions, mm. you can't. Yeah, I agree. I agree. What can, what can we do to help people see themselves better? Because something happened to you. And something happened to me yeah. where I saw myself differently. I, I was actually watching after our run. I, I was watching one of the videos that I did. I was trying to find this message where I spoke that, that I said I want to share with you. Yeah. And actually in that, it was like the seed of time I was talking about. And, you know, because I was also over, overweight. Yeah. Know, 2018, I really, well, end of 2017, I saw a photo of myself on Christmas. Yeah. So big, uh, it's a <laughs> tabletop for the dog. <laughs> and, um, and we'll have a laugh. I'll put it on for you yeah. here earlier. I'll just show you that part. And I saw, uh, I never saw myself like that. Yeah. And no one around me told me that. Yeah. But people were very quick to tell me when I was losing weight. And I go, what the hell? Why did no one tell me? Like, honestly, you're picking up a lot of weight. Like, get your shit under control. So, it's a great point you're raising. So, no one ever told me, listen here, uh, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> 120 is not a good place to be. But the moment I started losing weight, I also got that uh, point where people say, hey, are you okay? Are you healthy? I'm like, guy, oh, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> I'm I'm healthy. Uh, that old person wasn't healthy, but you said nothing, you know. And, you know, uh, I was on like this whole array of meds as well, right? Like, for my heart. Um, I was sharing with you 100 milligram of Lasata. I mean, this is nothing to be proud of and there's no competition, right? But you don't get more than 100 milligrams in, 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 in heart regulating um, especially around high blood pressure and those type of things. Um, and I was I was maxing out the meds, you know. These days I take a vitamin C. <laughs> you know, so, so uh, no meds, no surgery. No meds, no surgery. No diet. Yeah. No fancy diet. No fancy. So we diet. have to call it a diet because people are just eat it. I always say, what does diet stand for? Did I eat that? <laughs> you know, and yes, you did. <laughs> but so you raise a very important point about the excuses, right? So people, and how do we get people out of that? And I don't know. And, and is it my place? I don't know. All I can do is just to be uh, myself and, 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 and hope that, you know, my story around... Uh, the weight loss journey, uh, the movement journey. In other words, being able to move uh, freely. Um, you know, just around fitness. You know, that journey. Because it will be, it will remain a journey. Inspires some people along the way. You know, just to say, you know what? Um, here's a hard question. You know, are you happy with where you are? 
uh, in life. Now, if you're going to answer that question from, hey, you know what, financially, you know, I'm so happy, I'm so this, well, great for you, you know, and I, and I really mean that. If you're going to say, well, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm eating at all the best restaurants and all of that, well, great for you. My question is, are you happy with yourself? You know, and that's a hard question. And people will duck and dive to answer the hard question, you know, with yeah, but I drive this car or I live the well good for you, but are you happy? You know? Do you see you do you see your current self like this in the next ten years? Or do you think there's gonna be a little bit more degradation? And then people say things like, Yeah, but I'm getting older. So again, people are constantly looking for excuses. The hard truth about it, and, and people don't like it, right, is that um, if you stay on this path that you are, what's, what do you see your future tra trajectory like, you know? And don't put age down to it. And please don't put your culture down to it either. Um, it, for me, it's just really about having, having this sense of awakening. Uh, just to say, you know what? In my life, what am I enjoying? And if it's the same old things that you've been enjoying for the last 20 years, my gosh, your, your, your view on life is very limited. So, I mean, if I look at where running has taken me, I promise you, I, a couple of years ago, I'll never forget this, I, I uh, got this notification on, um, I think it was Insta or something, that Table Mountain, you know, there's snow on Table Mountain. It was a winter, maybe two years ago. And um, oh, there's snow on Table Mountain. Where? No, right on top of Table Mountain, by the cable car, that side. And immediately in my mind, I had this idea, like, you know, it'll be great right now for me to go see the snow, right? <laughs> so what I did was <laughs> took a shower, put on something warm, warm, shorts, <laughs> a t-shirt, <laughs> and a, a little jacket, you know, that kind of thing. And I decided, right, I'm going to park the car and I'm going to head up Plutterclip. And that's what I did. Man alone, started climbing up Plutterclip, you know, uh, Three quarter way to the top of Plutter Clip. Uh, my, my, my top felt a little bit, you know, funny. And I realized it was my sweat starting to freeze uh, on my back. That's how cold it was up there. And, um, but just check what I'm saying. There's snow. Let me go climb Table Mountain to go view the snow and then I'll take the cable car down. <laughs> For me years, if people were like, Oh, there's snow on Table Mountain, I would have said, Oh, cool, where's the pictures? <laughs> you know? Let me let me view the pictures. I took pictures, you know, I was up there. Yeah, you know, but it's like I actually went to go and, you know, or, or people say there's there's snow, let's go where? Where? No, we can take a drive to see this. Okay, that's cool. But I mean <laughs> still, you know. And uh, for me it's the um it's that unintended reward that I've been experiencing where yeah. you start to, like things that you thought were impossible are no longer impossible. Yeah. Like you can think you can do crazy things. Like, I mean, I shared some of the crazy things that I maybe will talk about at some point in my life yeah. over the next two years that I think I can do. Now, it's crazy to think that I'm only 11, well, 12 weeks, th th well, 13 weeks now into like, Proper trying to run better, trying to enjoy myself in doing running, and I've got this crazy idea. Listen, when people watch this and they hear you say crazy, they're going to go, oh, okay, cool, it's a crazy idea, whatever, maybe he wants to run a marathon or another one. No, I mean, you will talk about it at another time. We, will, we won't mention it here, but it is super crazy. That's all I can say. When you mentioned that to me today, I was like, wait. Let me just process what this man is saying. This is flipping insane, you know? Uh, you're crazy with me, come run with me. I think, uh, yeah, this is a level above crazy what you're talking about. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's energizing to hear that, I must admit. I mean, it's, it's for me. we'll, uh, we'll talk yeah. about maybe like doing a, a, something smaller <laughs> to start out. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, the, the unintended... Um, consequences is that you will start to feel like you mm. can do so much more than you ever believed was yeah, possible. Exactly. 
Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, for, for me as well, you know, sometimes when I look at my, my training calendar, you know, and I scroll through the week and I'm like, oh, I've got to go do this, uh, you know, 45K run on Saturday. And then I've got to do another 30Ks on the Sunday, you know, back to back type of running. And um, for me, when I look at it, I just go, okay, cool. Sure. It, it, you know, but it's a big deal. You know, um, you, 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 you have to get to that level where you have the self-belief and you have this level of, okay, I, I can go and do this thing. And then once you've done it, like you're saying, there are other things like just like having the ability to say, well, you know what, let's go on holiday. While we're on holiday, we're going to go uh, hiking here or go, or go view something in the mountains over there. Ordinarily, you would not have done that. You know, you'd have maybe just sat back. Okay, let's light the fire. Let's uh, open a couple of beers, <laughs> pour a bottle of wine or something. And now all of a sudden you're saying, no, no, hold on. Let's go do that adventure. And I think for me, that is such a powerful word, you know, adventure. Because that's what it is. What, what is an adventure? You know, you can't tell me that, uh, you know, hey, listen, we're going to drink this wine and that wine. And, and that's an adventure for you because... You're going wine tasty. It's an adventure. Yeah, no, it's no. You just <laughs> nothing wrong with going no, wine tasting. Sure, all means, but yeah, but it can't be your adventure. You know, it, it, it has to. There's there's more to life, in other words. Yeah, and like I was saying to you earlier today, I think from a, for a lot of people born in South Africa, with in our era, we grew up in a very limited means of what you can and what you cannot do. You know, uh, if I look at our old regime and those type of things. And it's, yes, it's gone. It's, it's in the past. But there's still some deeply embedded thoughts and belief systems that, that's in us that we need to break free from. And sometimes, um, I'm using this term a lot these days, imposter syndrome. You know, you almost believe like, no, that's, that's for them, Right? So even when I started running, you know, I, you know, I would like drive through early in the morning to go to Seapoint Prom and do some speed work on a Tuesday morning. And I still do it. But you kind of look at the calendar and you're saying, oh, I've got to run it four minutes a kilometer. You know, uh, this is fast. This, can I do it? Well, they can do it because they have been running for 10 years. They have been running for 15 years or whatever the case may be. So you have this imposter syndrome. Again, what you're doing is you're putting yourself in a situation of saying, well, they can do this, but I can't. So you're coming up with some sort of, you won't call it an excuse, but you're coming up with a very good means to make yourself believe why you cannot achieve something, you know? And... So when I saw those times, I was like, oh, and I, I will, I mean, you, we wouldn't even, you wouldn't even pace it. You're cruising and we weren't at that pace. And I, you know, was trying to keep up with you for all of the 40 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with where I am. Yeah. But I, I look at that and what you're saying and, yeah. you know, what, what went through my head was I'm going to try and run 5Ks. Yeah. At five and a half minutes. Right. I'm going to try and get a five and a half minute. I'm not going to try and run a four minute pace. Yeah. yeah. Because I haven't yet achieved a yeah. five and a half minute pace. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've run six minute pace at 5Ks. That's, I've done. Yeah. So now I'm going to go, okay, cool. It's 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's that light pole. Yeah. That's it. That's Most people, they just, I think they just, I just, just don't even try. I think that's the part that frustrates me the yeah. most is that looking for excuses why we can't, never ever trying yeah. and then attacking you. That's, that's, that's true. Yeah. You know, and all sorts of excuses. I got, and sometimes <laughs> you will say, yes, yeah, because you work from home. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's even harder. Yeah. Because exactly. I wake office. up, I'm at the office <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> straight away. And I got three kids. So yeah. I've got to plan things around, you know, like what their needs are. Correct. Um, I'm, I've got a wife, yeah. which is like 
Now the seven king. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although she would probably say it the other way. <laughs> I was about to say that. <laughs> But yeah, yeah everyone's got something going on in their life, man. And they are all like in your running community, all yeah. walks of life. Yeah, different yeah, yeah. people. Yeah. You know, and it's just... You know, I'll share a quick story with you. So I got a friend. She was five months pregnant. Okay. She ran Cape Town Marathon. All she did was she said, I'm running this thing. She took very good care of her body. Healthy diet. Looked after, you know, growing baby. On the morning, strapped. This five months, you know, uh, little growing baby into some, I don't know what thing she had. Five months pregnant. And she ran Cape Town Marathon. And she finished it under five hours. I mean, this is crazy. Okay. That is, that is elite. So, uh, you know, and uh, the, the ease just, I would say the biggest enemy is yourself. Right. Your biggest enemy is yourself. Whenever you're racing, people will always say things like, oh, when you're going into a race, you're racing against yourself. You always hear people talk about that. And <clears throat> I sit back and I go, no, I'm not racing myself. I'm racing all these buggers that's around me here, right? <laughs> Otherwise, it would just be me, myself, and I in this race. <laughs> you know? It depends on the size of the race. There could be a couple of hundred people. There could be a couple of thousand people, whatever. But I'm not here competing just against myself. I'm competing against my abilities, my mindset, myself. Yeah, sure. But every Dick Tom and Harry that's also here, you know. <laughs> so don't, don't try to make my world smaller, please. You know. Uh, I must say, on the so I, I say that you know, but I'm just starting out in this. Yeah. Like I'm just trying to be better than because I'm not gonna win the race. I know that. Yeah. Just yet. Yeah. I'm just trying to be better and, and most of the time I'm just trying to finish a, a set distance. Sure, sure. You know? Yeah. And it was really hard for me it, at Neisner Forest. Yeah. There's a loop, a turnaround loop. Yes. So basically, you're seeing people come this way and I'm running that and, and that motivated me. Yeah. I was like, oh, there are too many people coming this way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I, uh, I up my pace. And yeah. I was like, because it just, and it's, a, and it's healthy. It is healthy to be competitive. Absolutely. There is nothing wrong with trying to beat the person next to you. Yeah. Not physically beat him unless you are a UFC boxer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to try and outperform. Absolutely. That's what racing is about, man. I mean, my kids, mm -hmm. when, when we send them to school, yeah. to play school, yeah. they, they develop quicker. Yeah. Why? Because it's competition. That's right. They see someone else build, they try to build it, yeah. try to build it better. Yeah. There's some tussles and fights and whatever happens. And, you know, it, it's good to be in a community that motivates you, Absolutely. which comes back to the point of yeah. why can't we tell the fat cousin that we love, hey man, put that fried chicken down. Here's a salad. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I, I think uh, it takes a little bit of courage to do that. And, um, Maybe you get cut off from the family. <laughs> yeah. I'm not invited. But it's my cheat day. Yeah. It's my cheat day, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're having a family function. Uh, Richard and his family, right? That's it. They're not coming. You know, that kind of thing. But um, yeah, I think it's just about taking, you know, talks about self care, self preservation, um, and looking not only at you know, your world, the people that's around you. So it is, it, you know, I, so I try to be an encouragement to people. Um, a lot of people who know me know me as a feeder, to be honest with you. So I'm always constantly trying to feed people. Um, but it's just my nature, right, to, right, to, to, to say, well, you know, have whatever. Um, <clears throat> or, or just to share, you know. But at the same time, uh, I'm also encouraging or try to encourage, you know, along the way, um, you know, just like I've been telling some of my family, you know what, we're doing a run this week. You should come out and support, you know, just put up a little table there and make sure that, you know, the drinks and, and, and uh, you know, the snacks, is, it's, it's prepped for the runners as they come by, or, you know, I'm trying to, you know, maybe grow some sort of uh, seed or plant some sort of seed at least uh, in their minds just to say, well, there's a different side to life 
other than just what you used to, you know. And we were talking about something quite powerful earlier. We said that, you know, become comfortable with being uncomfortable. And it's a, it's a journey, you know, to become comfortable with being very uncomfortable. Uh, and I was sharing with you that, I mean, in my work life, I mean, 90% of the day, you know, I'm uncomfortable. You know, there's just so many business decisions that, that, that's, that's uh, going on and that, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've got to take it in a very short period of time. Um, in my running, um, they, I'm still very uncomfortable with, with certain things, you know. And, uh, but in that time of being uncomfortable there's this time of growth then this time of learning and this time of maturing you know those type of things it's just really about just maybe just showing up and just doing what you're doing but then with the other thing we we're talking about was the adverse of encouragement which is you know people sort of almost uh, coming across as other than encouraging but 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 not being intentional <laughs> about it <laughs> you know they kind of you know there's some comments that are, that are kind of made and um, coming out of a good place, right? Coming out of a place of love. For example, um, don't run in the rain. Uh, <laughs> are you going to be okay? Uh, you, you could get ill along the way, you know, that kind of thing. You know? so, so it's everything but encouraging, you know. And, and people say these things just because they care right but they're also saying it because in my opinion it's that um, they didn't dare to do certain things in their life they didn't dare pushing that 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 envelope a little bit further like i was talking about earlier just pushing their boundaries um so it almost comes across like you know uh hey they're holding me back but it, it's if, if you see it that way it's it's actually just the wrong way of seeing it in my opinion you know, they just, they just, it's just out of love. But that's the noise. You kind of have to just push by the, to the wayside. And like I was sharing with you today, if you do something long enough, people will stop saying things like, oh, he's just doing something to keep busy. Or he's just doing something for now. Or, hey, it's a little bit of a phase in his life or something you know when you start doing it like i'm coming up for four years now uh, in october uh but i mean not not on and off this is like four years of proper training and you know really pushing the boundaries somewhere along the line people's minds change about you and they start to say wait hold on uh this matter is this is actually <laughs> A lifestyle for him now you know and um, yeah it is you know like some people will say things like you're so lucky that you can eat all this cake and uh, not put on weight oh I wish I was like you I'm like I also wish you were like me you know what I wish I wish you'd come around with me you know <laughs> I wish you come work out with me six days a week you know people don't see that part yeah it's uh, very easy to ignore that it's very easy to ignore that yeah the, the years of hard work put in, in place, you know, the, whether it's business, your career, Correct. whether it's, no whether it's running, whether it's yeah. paddles, you know, all of these things that like people don't see the hard work that yeah. goes into it. Like even like now the craze around playing paddle mm. in the over 40s. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, it's because I was chatting to someone uh, yesterday and, and saying that it's a great outlet for people to go do something. And then you'll have the people that only play uh, uh, once a weekend. Yeah. And then you have people that play tournaments and they play in the week as well. It's really good. You know? Yeah. And they and then they wonder why they're getting beat by that person. Yeah. But no. they only show up on a weekend, weekend to play that one game. That's right. And they go, oh, they, they, they're cheating. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or maybe they, then there's some like wild stuff come out, man. Like what the, people create wild yes. stories about right. stuff. And I just... I always go like, man, you do not see the work. That You're not seeing the work yet. Like you were talking about the, the seed. You know, there's, um, what did you say? After you plant the seed, there's the... the so for me, I, I have this thing in my life 
that that I look at as well and 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 I was mentioning to you that look the power is in the waiting you know the power is in the waiting so so what am I talking about like I mean you you take the seed you stick it into dirt and right we call it soil but I mean this thing starts to grow but it doesn't grow overnight you know it does you don't put the seed in the ground and if it's an apple seed, tomorrow you got apples. You don't, you don't have that, right? So, I mean, the power's in the waiting. That thing's got to transform from a seed. It's got to take some sort of roots. And then this thing grows into some sort of stem. And it, there's, a, there's a period. And in this period of um, planting the seed to getting the, the fruit, within that period, there are little other periods. And each of those little periods is a waiting time. There's a waiting period. You know, but in that waiting period, there's this time for transformation that, that occurs. And there, for me, lies the key. So if you just look at it from seed to fruit, uh, a lot of us are very much in a hurry. And um, <coughs> we just want, we want the fruit. Um, but we, we forget that there's transformation that needs to take place. So, I mean, even in life, uh, you can take any, anything uh, in, in your life whether you you know you're starting a new career whether you're starting a business like yourself uh, many years ago you've done that and if you look at you know from what happened then to where you are right now there's been changes there's been transformation there's been maturing um, everything has this little period and what I was sharing with you is that some people go through some time of isolation in their life and you know when they look at that isolation they say oh I'm all alone but that's your waiting period you know that's what i see it that's your that's your waiting period that's your time for you know your character your your new skill your new outlook on life uh, that 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 time of transformation that that's happening so my advice i'm in no position to give anyone the advice but if you're willing to listen to it write it out you know uh welcome the transformation welcome the the waiting period uh, for me as well, if I just look at um, weight loss journey, that didn't happen, you know, within one month. That took many, many months. Um, but you just got to, you know, keep, keep sticking to it. And it's a, also, it's a, it's a continual evolution. It's a continual iteration. I mean, for exactly. me, also my weight loss was, you know, where you'd, um, you'd have sort of periods where you go like, oh, uh, the festive season is it's it's March. <laughs> you can't still be on yeah, festive yeah, season yeah, eating. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's get back into it. You yeah. know, but if you invest in the the long game of the habit, yeah. you know, so you develop a habit rather than trying to lose weight. Yeah. And I often talk about this in every sphere of life. People are too busy trying to get rid of a thing, tidy your room, for example. I mean, I've got children, so it's a theme sure, for us sure, now. Sure, sure. So instead of trying to tell them to tidy their room, I try to develop habits yeah. instead of, you know, when you get undressed, take your this and go put it somewhere, to yeah. put it in the wash hamper or something. Or when you come back from school and you put your bag down, I know you're tired, sure. but let's take your lunchbox out, just your lunchbox. Yeah. You can leave everything else. Yeah. So trying to form habits. And so with eating, it's the, instead of trying to lose a hundred kgs or like yeah. a person, like 58 kgs, you know, try to eat an apple more regularly, an apple a day. Yeah, yeah. And then a new habit, you can invest in a new habit because you're not changing big things. Sure. So for, to get back into like, oh, if I've extended the festive period, yeah. it's like easy for me to get back into the better eating habit sure. because it's, a habit, not a sure. diet. I'm not on a diet. Huh? Yeah. I'm just living life. And I've just got these habits. Yeah. It's the same with running. If you develop the habit of a training schedule, of like my daughter plays hockey and she has training in the morning at one of the hockey fields from 6 a.m. until 7. And then she's got to go, go to school. Yeah. So there's an hour yeah. that there's, she, I need to wait for her. I could sit in the car, listen to podcasts, yeah, my right. laptop on or whatever it is, or drop her off, go back home and then go fetch her again. Yeah, really. But what do I do? I go for a run. Right. It's a short run, 
it's a decent run. I mean, before that wasn't a short run for me. That hour yeah. was a, yeah. that was a half in puff. Yeah, you know. But now, yeah, it's a nice, brisk. I get to watch the sunrise. Uh, nice. Beautiful run. Yeah. Oh, I come back and then she's had her exercise. We both have like a, you know, some water together and something to eat and drive off to school. We have a chat. Yeah. So we've both done something. So new habits have formed. You know, and I think that's really what you know, I try and encourage people with is, yeah. it's, you know, similar to what you're talking about, that that waiting, developing habits. Yeah. It's like if you, if you are, like you say, it's that quiet period, like don't waste it in TV watching. No. Go do some movement, right? Just move, move. Can be running, can be cycling, can be walking, just walking to the shop and back. I don't know. Just move. Yeah. That's That's the message, right? That is my message to people. Just move. So uh, I, I'm sure people like to binge watch. I mean, I, that's cool. I mean, I'm not saying don't do that, please. Don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm just saying put some time aside and just think of some some longevity, you know. Yeah. You were talking about, you know, um, this morning around how sometimes what you do in the short term, I don't know the exact words that you use, but how it impacts your long term. There was a certain phrase that you used there. Yeah, you sacrifice your long term gain for short term for yeah. uh, for short term gain. Yeah. So you put your your long term uh, interests and wealth and everything at risk yeah. for for short term sure. satisfaction. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And a lot of people do that. I mean, I'm not perfect, and I'm not no. not guilty of this myself, no, no, but for sure. It's like, you know, oh, I'm going to watch TV because I'm tired. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, a lot of times I feel like we don't deserve our tiredness. Sure. You know, like um, you, you don't get to come home and, and say, I'm tired. Mm. Like you didn't do anything. Like you worked all day. Sure. But you know, why are you saying you're tired? Like, and then the, you don't do any, I almost rest this weekend. I didn't get enough sleep. Yeah. Like, I always feel like that's those are silly excuses. You're not actually tired. You know why you're tired? Because you haven't done any movement. You haven't really moved around. You know? That's why you're tired. Your brain is is telling you, like, hey, you get up, go do something. Like get get a get a reason to be tired. Yeah, yeah. Get a reason to be tired. You know? Or change your life. So yeah. So I know someone who's gotten quite uh, into gardening, for example. But he's got this massive area. And it was just like a, a wasteland. But I mean, week in, week out, you know, him and his family, they're busy digging, they planting new things, they 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 busy, they, you know. And uh, even over this last couple of months now, I'm starting to notice a change, not only, you know, in his physique, but I mean just being a little bit more willing to move. Also his focus. So his ability to focus for much longer, like that's what I discovered as well with myself, for example, um, when it comes to work-wise, I can really sit down and focus for hours on, on end. I, I, I promise you, like I can just, like that before, it was like, oh, hours gone by, let me, uh, oh, let me go have another cup of coffee. Or, you know, maybe I should have something to snack on now or whatever the case may be. Since, um, you know, been running is just like, I, I can really just focus. So it has a lot of, a lot of impacts on, your, on, on the body, on the brain, uh, on your mood, all of those things without you even planning for those things. It, it just, you just start to notice it after a while, like, oh wow, like three hours have gone by and I'm still able to like really dial in to what I'm doing, you know. Um, I never knew that that was going to be a, a side effect. <laughs> uh, but it's there. Consequence, yeah. yeah, unintended consequence. So it's it's there, you know, wasn't planned for. So there's, there's a, it's like just a whole lot of cool things that happen. And um, yeah, you get to have fun and you get to go places you've never been to before. Um, like, for example, a couple of, a, a lot of the times... Um, you know, a couple of us will just get together and say, okay, well, what's happening? Okay, we're driving out to, oh, it's, you know, Franschuk or wherever the case would be. And uh, we're just going to go do a run out there, you know. And ordinarily, you would have been, you know, still tucked in 
under your blankets on a cold winter's morning. And there we are. The guys were doing that yesterday morning, actually. Uh, I was planning to run with them. Um, but I did my own thing here uh, before heading through to Franschhoek. Um, but it's so cool, you know. It just takes you out of your, out of your comfort zone. It takes you off the couch. Yeah, yeah. So, do you have any uh, international running aspirations? Mm. I do. I do. So, um, I am actually looking at doing uh, one of the marathons, uh, one of the big five uh, marathons, you know, whichever I can get into. Uh, it's a bit difficult to get into to some of those marathons, you know. Uh, towards at London, Boston, New York. Yeah, I was looking at London, to be honest with you, and seeing if I can, if I can do that. And then there's um, an interesting little trail race that, that happens in Turkey, a place called uh, Cappadocia. Um, uh, I've visited Cappadocia before. Um, fantastic place. If anyone you know, knows anything about Cappadocia, that's the place with all the hot air balloons and you know, uh, the wonderful formations, mountain formations and those type of things. But they got a little, uh, a little. They got a, a hell of a, a trail race out there and they got a little one as well, you know. So I'm thinking of um, maybe doing that. Uh, yeah. But I first need to go back to Comrades so I can do the back-to-back. -back. Uh, and then... Uh, Why is that important? So, quite interesting. You can only get a back-to-back -back medal with Comrades if you were a novice and if you run the next year again, two years in a row. But you have to be a novice and then run the second year then you'll get your back-to-back -back medal. Uh, if there's a break in between, you don't get it. Or if you didn't finish the first year and you come back in year two and year three and run that back-to-back, -back, you still don't get it because you're no longer a novice. You have to be a novice and you have to finish the next year. So this year was my first uh, comrades. Um, I, you know, it, I, it felt good to be a novice. Um, and... It was quite cool because walking around the, the, the expo, they got this area there that says, you know, green numbers. So green numbers is you've run, you completed, sorry, you completed 10 or more comrades, right? And they got a special lounge for these guys and they got all these fancy eats and treats and, you know, things to snack on and sip on and whatever. And you kind of walk around this expo and this huge expo and it's, it's amazing, you know. And you sit there going, sure, look at these guys. And then all of a sudden I come across this thing that says, novice, the novice lounge. You know, so they kind of made you feel quite comfortable. Um, like, okay, you're a novice, this is your first comrades, come into this lounge. The eats and treats and snacks wasn't at the same level. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of got the toppers biscuits <laughs> while these guys were getting, you know, the, the real cream of the crop, you know. Uh, they were getting nice, uh, you know, a barista making coffee for them. We were like, uh, okay, they can read coffees over there. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but um, they kind of made you feel very special as being a novice. And then you've got to go back the next year and, and, and so you, you do the up and the down, basically. And then, uh, you know, you get your, your medal plus another medal, which is your back-to-back -back and quite a sort of the medal. So, yeah, looking, yeah, looking forward to, to getting that, God willing. And then um, thereafter, you know, I, I don't plan to do many comrades after that. I'd like to go into uh, a bit more trail running and, uh, you know, getting some accomplishments there. Um, although, I must admit something quickly. So, when I started running, I was running 5K blitz. Like, you know, then I was doing the 21Ks. And I said, I'm going to become a 21K specialist. That's it. 21Ks. Um, um, and I mean, I ran uh, two oceans half. You know, there's some nice uh, climbs uh, in, in, in that half marathon. And I ran it one hour 36. I mean, it's crazy fast. I averaged four minutes 26 a kilometer on, on that course. And um, what did the winner do? I think the winner is uh, they, they're doing uh, 109 or something. I don't know. I was going to take a look. Sure. Maybe less than that, 103. I don't know. Uh, I don't even bother looking at that. That's just like 
just so far, you know, uh, ahead of where I am. And um, I kind of said, you know what? 21K, that's it. Every 21K that I can get my hands on, I'm going to smash this thing, right? And then I started going into a little bit more in terms of getting into the endurance side of it. And the moment I got into the endurance side of it, all of a sudden I was like, ah, dull with this 21K. I want to do endurance, you know? And for me, like a, a marathon, absolute long, it's, for me it's like an endurance type of, of running. And I, that kind of grew on me. And, and, you know, for me it was like, okay, that's it. I will never do a two oceans ultra, which is 56K. And pff, who cares about comrades? I'm never going to do that. Never. I'm going to, you know, focus on the marathon. After a couple of marathons, I was like, ah, you know what? Let me try this 56K thing, <laughs> you know? And I, I ran my first Two Oceans Ultra and I ran it in just under six hours. And, um, you know, when I ran it this year, I ran it in five hours, 24. Um, and from that point onwards, I was like, you know, comrades is... I have to do this. Mm. And you, you're running that distance, you know, and you, you can't almost believe that the body is capable of doing that, you know, especially you're running up from Durban up all the way to Peter Marisburg. If, if you, people don't normally conceptualize it, but it's, it's almost the height of stacking two table mountains, right, on top of each other, you know, going up all the way to, to Marisburg. And it's a mind job, you know. Um, and for me, I'm saying now to you today, uh, I want to get my back to back and then I want to, you know, stop comrades. <laughs> After that, who knows? I might go, you know, I might go back. Couple of multi-day, uh, 100 milers. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see what, what you know, the journey is... Y- it's a never-ending story, right? So, you, you, you know, you, you don't know what, what's, what's around the corner. And that's what makes it so exciting. You know, a lot of people are very outcome-based, like we were talking about earlier. They want to lose 10 kilos in two months or whatever the case may be. I don't know. It's very, very outcome-based, um, which is kind of the wrong approach. You should really be journey-focused, right? And uh, it's, it's, it's sometimes you're going to have an up, sometimes you're going to have a down. Welcome to the journey, you know. That's, that's what it is about. Um, sometimes you're going to have a good run, sometimes you're going to have a bad run. Welcome to the journey. You know, um, sometimes you're going to plan for a race. All your nutrition, all your um, training that you've done, been on point, come race day, something goes wrong. Uh, welcome to the journey, you know. <laughs> Life is going to throw these little things at you. Um, but it's how you respond to that. That's like I said, uh, you, your response has to be bigger than the problem. Um, well, at least in my case, that's where I, 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 I um, look at life. I look at running. I look at whatever the case may be. Um, that for me has been key uh, throughout my journey. Kevin, thank you so much yeah. for this. This has been insightful. Any last thoughts you want to share? I think that was a powerful way to to end it in anything. So for me, it's just around not losing hope. There's a way out, you know. Um, Sometimes people look at life and they say, man, you know what? Uh, They express their happiness to people, but deep down inside, they maybe feel, you know, like there's some fulfillment in life that's lacking or it's just not there. Or they ask hard questions like, what is my purpose? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> if you don't know how much I know. Uh, but all I can say is, for me, what's, what's really important is just about having that movement, enjoying life, and not limiting your enjoyment. There's so much, you know. We were saying earlier on, we live in South Africa. My gosh. Uh, whatever you want, you don't have to travel far. It's right here. You know, uh, we've got it at our fingertips. Um, enjoy it. Life is life. Go get it.